Ever feel like your job gives you a lot to handle? For one federal worker in Southern Nevada, she says she does up to eight jobs in a day. Because she's the only employee at Desert National Wildlife Refuge. Fox 5's Jacqueline Schultz shows us the workload facing her and others like her across the country. This looks like the middle of nowhere. It's only 15 minutes outside of the valley. This is the largest wildlife refuge in the lower 48 states. 1.6 million acres. Only one person, one woman, oversees it all. From every creature in the water, the animals that roam the land, every acre, and every single person who visits Desert National Wildlife Refuge. So pretty much as far as you can see, this is mine. Amy Sprunger is in charge. She's also the only person. Her job, take care of the refuge, the size of two Rhode Islands, plus hundreds of football fields. Presently, uh, there are no other staff, so I'm fresh out of warm bodies right now. It's a problem plaguing many of the hundreds of wildlife refuges nationwide. Stagnant staffing, less workers overall, yet thousands more visitors every year. The sites struggle to fight off wear and tear. And what worries people most are the wildlife and lands we love protected for future generations. This is our legacy. Um, it's really important for people to understand that this is their land. How many people's jobs would you say you do? Oh, boy, that's a tough question. Easily five. It could, uh, you know, could go upwards on any given day um, to probably seven or eight. I like to think that I do the best that I can. Amy does her best to get through quite the to-do list. Uh, driving through the refuge, I'll, I'll pick up trash. We have a couple of vault toilets and making sure they're stocked with toilet paper. And on any given day, I could wear many hats, some light maintenance, to administrative work, to some visitor services work, answering the phone, working on reports. Amy gets to do all the office work. She has the whole office to herself. She's got an eye on the road. Checking the road conditions, because we want to make sure that the roads are as safe as possible. Invasive weeds tend to take over native species. And another eye on the ground. The refuge is down a maintenance worker and a biologist. It's very difficult to, to stay on top of. Uh, it, it, so right now there's no one to stay on top of it. That's correct. Does it ever weigh a lot on your shoulders that you're the only person making sure this refuge is up and running. You bet. Um, it's, it is pretty stressful. Um, it's, it's workloads that uh, just basically can't be handled by one person. Probably in the past, I would say 10 years, um, our visitation has probably more than doubled. So this is where uh, desert wildlife refuge is. Kevin Dis Roberts oversees all the refuges in Southern Nevada. He says staff levels have stayed pretty consistent for decades. Since 2016, the budget for all four sites did get a slight bump to hire one more worker and handle 20,000 more visitors in 2019. Nationwide over the past decade, there are less people working on the 500 refuges that saw close to 200 million people last year. Our staff work a lot and they, they really work very hard and they put in a lot of extra hours to get the work done. But the, the major thing that has to occur is they focus on the highest priorities. So especially if there's emergencies, those sorts of things, that's what gets focused on and other things have to be pushed to the side. What troubles staff the most is what they can't see. The creatures we know and love and symbolize Nevada, from the beloved bighorn sheep, the endangered desert tortoise, are they thriving or just surviving? There's a lot we don't know that is going on because we don't have the people to, to monitor it or survey it. Without doing monitoring long term, you don't have a good sense of what's happening with those populations. I can wake up in the middle of the night with my head just buzzing with stuff that, no, that I know needs done. You have 1.6 million acres on your shoulders. Yeah, pretty much so. Thankfully, in Southern Nevada, volunteers fill in the gaps. Last year, 400 volunteers donated 17,000 hours. That's the equivalent of eight full-time workers. Amy says without them, this visitor center wouldn't be open. To keep these lands alive, staff say, visit and volunteer. These are the legacies that are being created for the future. 
and it's very important to keep these areas protected. Nevada Congressman Mark Amadeus is on the subcommittee that oversees the refuge system. He was supposed to meet with us in studio, but canceled due to his schedule. We still don't have a statement from his office. For 2021, the Trump administration proposed an additional $22 million, which the Wildlife Refuge Association says the boost could help with workloads. The budget is at 2010 levels right now. Things are looking up for Amy. This month, a federal biologist will finally join her team, but it won't be till later this year that someone can be hired to help out with all the maintenance. Back to you.